Okay, today we're going to talk about forces in the Earth's crust. And <clears throat> what you're going to do is, as I share some information about our vocabulary terms, um, you're going to be filling in the data table that you have in front of you. And I've kind of set it up where I have the vocabulary terms, um, so you'll go along with my presentation, you'll write down the definitions, um, any supporting information or details that I give you, um, and I'm also going to have you try to, again, draw just the diagrams that um, demonstrate each of these processes. Um, then we'll look at a lot of different pictures of real-life um, situations. So, talking about forces in the Earth's crust, and if you remember anything from last year about forces, when you learned about energy, is that a force is any push or pull on an object. So the force we're talking about in terms of rock is the force of stress. And so I want you to write down the definition that stress is a force that causes rocks to change shape or volume. All right, so there's some type of activity that's causing the rock to physically change how it looks or actually change how much space it takes up. All right, and if force is a push or a pull, that's exactly what's happening to the rocks. They are getting pushed and pulled on different ways. <clears throat> And there are three major types of stress that um, rocks experience, and those three are compression, tension, and shearing. All right, so all this information should be in the box of the data table for stress. Now we're going to move to um, once stress is applied to rocks, then it causes um, faults to occur. So we're going to slide over to the right in your data table, and let's talk about faults. All right. um, and a fault is a break or crack in rock that causes it to move. All right. And where we have faults, where we have cracks in rock that causes them to move, that's where we experience earthquakes. All right. um, so not necessarily too difficult of a definition, um, but again, you have a crack in a huge piece of rock and it moves, that's where we're going to experience the earth moving. Um, Along in your data table, underneath fault, I have two other terms, and they are hanging wall and foot wall. And I know a lot of people had questions about those yesterday in class when they were doing their flashcards. So let's define them first, and then we'll take a look at some pictures. So there are two parts to all faults, and the first one is a hanging wall. And this is a block of rock that is above the fault line, above the crack in the rock. And so again, we'll look at a picture in a second and I'll show you uh, examples of the hanging wall. And then the foot wall is just the opposite. All right? It's the block of rock that is below the fault line. All right? So again, hanging wall is above the fault line, foot wall is below the fault line. And ways to remember it, if you're hanging, you're usually you know up in the air, you're above the ground, you're hanging, you don't want to fall. Um, and then the opposite, again, a foot wall, your feet are on the bottom of your body, and so the foot wall is below or on the bottom right, of the fault line. So let's take a look at a real-life example of a fault, and we'll identify the hanging wall and the foot wall. All right, so here is real rock, and it has experienced a fault sometime in the past, and I'm sure you can all see the fault, but let's identify it first. So here is our fault line. All right. And what we want to look at, again, is if most faults, when we look at a cross-section of rock, um, run at an angle. And you should learn about angles in math a little bit. But the angle, what I like to talk about, is if we were to remove the rock below the angle. All right. So we're going to consider this rock right here. All right. This is all below the angle. Right, if we were to do that, then this angle, this line, would have nothing to rest on and it would fall down. All right, so that's how I remember what section is above and what section is below. If you remove the rock below the angle, right, it'll fall down. So that's where we say, whoops, put that fault line back up. All right, this rock here right, to the left, this is above the angle. So the left side is considered the hanging wall. 
Right? And then the right side is below the angle, and so that is our foot wall. Again, if we were to remove the foot wall, the hanging wall, if you were hanging and you let go, would fall down. Right? And then again, the foot wall is below or on the bottom. All right, let's take a look at another one. Okay, again, here's another cross section of rock. You can see that someone hung a hammer <laughs> on the rock to kind of give you a little perspective about how big the fault is. It's not very big, um, but you can see the fault line, and I will light it up here in red so the fault line is running this way. So hopefully as you take a look now, see which section is above the line, right, of the fault line, and which section is below the line. And if you figured it out already, this section here to our left where the hammer is, this is below. So if we were to remove this section, the angle would fall down. So that makes this side our hanging wall. And then the left side, this side would be our foot wall. All right. Now I know you don't have any pictures in front of you right now, but um, one of our next activities I will be giving you a variety of different images and you're going to practice identifying hanging walls and foot walls and different types of faults. Alright, let's take a look at one more. All right, this one's actually already labeled for you, um, but again you can see, I'm just going to use a white, All right, you can see here the fault line running down the middle. Right, let me draw it, there it is. Alright, so here's our fault line and again our foot wall is to the left and so if we were to remove this section of rock, the hanging wall on the right would fall down. All right. So now that we can identify the hanging wall, again, that is the side or the block of rock that is above the fault line. Um, and the foot wall, we can now identify different types of faults. Okay. So what we have now is in your section of the data table on the left side under stress, we have our first type of stress, and that is compression. And again, from your flashcards yesterday, you remember that compression is when rock is squeezed until it folds, all right, or bends, or breaks, right? And this causes rock to become, if you think about it, it's getting squeezed together, so it's getting compacted, so you have more rock in one space, and that causes rock to become much more dense. And before I continue playing um, the writing, think about our uh, plate boundaries that we studied before vacation and what type of plate boundary would cause rock to get squeezed together. You can already see the C and if you've guessed it that would take place at a convergent boundary. So we have two plates pushing together which would squeeze rock causing it to bend or fold or break all right, making it more dense um, and that would cause a certain type of fault. So compression when rock is squeezed causes Oops, I apologize. I forgot we were going to show that diagram. Let me go back. I'm sorry. So this is the diagram that I'd like you to draw with your definition of compression. <clears throat> so again, this looks just like the one we did yesterday in class. Um, just quickly show uh, our rock getting squeezed together. And you have your two arrows, all right, and they're already on the diagram. But you have some arrows on the right, and you have some arrows on the left and it just shows that the rock is getting squeezed together and more dense in the middle. Okay? All right. Now, let's look at what type of fault would occur when the rock is squeezed together. So the first type of fault that would occur when the rock is squeezed together is called a reverse fault. And this is where the hanging wall, all right, moves up along the foot wall. All right? And again, this might seem a little weird, but once we look at some pictures, hopefully it will make some sense. So, a reverse fault, again, is a fault where the hanging wall moves up the foot wall. And again, this is caused by compression. All right, so the rock is squeezed, it cracks and breaks, and the hanging wall gets pushed or moved up. So let's look at some real pictures. Okay, oops, I keep forgetting. Um, sorry, we had a diagram first. All right, so... Here we have our fault line again, All right. and you can see our arrows at the top, All right. our black arrows, but it shows that the rock, again, is getting squeezed. So it's getting squeezed together, and when that happens, it cracks and breaks, and it pushes the hanging wall up. 
so you see my arrow and you see the arrow here already in the diagram all right so it pushes that rock up and you can see the reason why we can tell it got pushed up is if we have our rock layers we have our our blue layer right here all right its matching layer is here and then same thing with the green and same thing with the brown so there were layers that were matched up but once they got um, once the hanging roll got pushed up now the layers are uneven so I would like you to again just quickly draw this diagram of a reverse fault it doesn't have to have as many arrows or as many layers of rocks but just to give you the idea again that the hanging wall has moved up All right, and once you're done with that we'll take a look at some real pictures okay so here is a real rock and we'll, I'll give you a second or you can pause it and identify you know the fault line and identify the hanging wall and the foot wall All right, so here is our fault line right here okay. and so our hanging wall hopefully you have identified is on the right side and I'm just going to abbreviate so this is our whoops use my pen this is our hanging wall and so that would make on the left side this is our foot wall and again the reason we can tell is because if you look at this purple section, and I'll actually use a purple color, you can look at this purple section here, all right, of this rock, all right, it once lined up with the purple section or the pink section up here, all right, so when there was a break in the rock, there was a shift, and the hanging wall on the right side moved up. All right, and the foot wall may have moved down a little bit. And if you look closely, you can see other layers that match up, um, but those two purple or pink ones um, are the obvious ones. All right, we'll move a little quicker. Here's another example all right, of a reverse fault. Again, here is our fault line. All right, and maybe this one isn't as easy to see the matching layers, but so if there's our fault line, our hanging wall will be on the left side because again it is above the angle so our hanging wall is on the left, our foot wall is over here on the right side and then matching layers a little harder to see but if you first look, and I'll just use white if you look at this tan section right here all right, that used to match up with that section down there all right, so the tan section on the left got pushed up all right. And then if you want to look even more, you have this black section in here and that matched up with this dark section over here. All right. And one more. Oops, I thought I had another picture. So, we're moving on to our second form of stress, which is called tension. And I'll share all the information first. So, tension is when not as um, compression is when rock is pushed. Tension is when rock is pulled or stretched out. And if you think about anything, food or candy or I think of like taffy, when it gets stretched, right, it becomes less dense. And the type of boundary where plates move apart is a divergent boundary and that would cause rock to get stretched and become less dense. So let's look at the diagram again from yesterday, just showing rock getting pulled apart. All right, so you have a couple arrows, and again, as it happens, the rock becomes less dense. All right, and now let's look at the fault that would go along with it. So when you have tension, we would experience a normal fault, and this is where the hanging wall moves down along the fault line. Uh, and again, it's caused by tension. So reverse fault, the hanging wall moves up. A normal fault, the hanging wall moves down. So let's look at our diagram. Okay, here's our diagram, and I'd like you to draw it. But again, here is your fault line, right, and you can see your black arrows because the rock is getting pulled apart all right, and stretched. All right, it causes the hanging wall, all right, or in this diagram it calls it the hanging block, to move down, to fall down. And so you see how the brown, green, and blue sections do not match up anymore. All right, and that's a normal fault. Once you're done drawing this diagram, we can move on and we'll look at some real pictures of normal faults. And so this is the first one. 
and we'll first identify the fault line and you can see that the person put a quarter there to give you some perspective again of how big the fault is so it's not very big All right, if you see the quarter there um, but there's our fault line so where would the hanging wall be hopefully you can identify that the hanging wall will be on the left because again it is above the fault line so a hanging wall is on the left and that would make our foot wall on the right All right, and the reason why we know this is a normal fault is because the hanging wall moved down. And the reason why, or the reason how we know that the hanging wall moved down, you see that white or that um, tan or very light line of rock, and I'll use white to outline it. So this line used to match up with this line. Um, but since they no longer do, you can tell that this side moved down. Oops, my rock bad arrow there. All right. Let's look at another one. Okay. Very big. All right. Example. Um, if you look really close, and I'll just use my pen real quick, way in the middle you see some people climbing on the rock. All right. So that's actually a pretty big um, fault. All right. So our fault line, again, we see the, whoops. Let's go back. All right. Here's our fault line. I don't need to do that. There's our fault line right there. And which one would be our hanging wall? Our hanging wall is above the fault line, so the hanging wall is on the right. And our foot wall would then be on the left. And you can tell the matching layers. So I'll use my gray. And if you see that kind of gray section down here below where I wrote HW, this gray section all right, move down because it used to match up with this gray section right here. All right, um, if you just look at the large like tan section, and again I'm just using colors that kind of match, but the large tan section on the right used to match up with this tan section on the left. All right, so again you can tell that the hanging wall has moved down. So this is a normal fault. Okay, last one. All right, this is a mountain, but again, you can see our fault line. Here's our fault line running up here. So which side would be the hanging wall? Hanging wall would be on the left. So here's our hanging wall, and foot wall would be on the right. All right, and rock layers that line up, maybe not as easy to see. Um, but if you look at some lighter areas of rock, all right, which would be, and you can see that actually they put a red line, all right, but this light area right here on the left side on the hanging wall used to match up with this side right here. All right, so those are all examples of normal faults where the hanging wall moved down. And again, that's caused by um, stretching. <clears throat> excuse me, um, from tension. All right, last one. 